Right, the Explorer Elite. Very well packaged, I must say. Wrapped in this lovely foam. I think the best packaging I've ever seen. Let's see what else you've got in the box here. You've got an open back for the waterproof case, which looks very nicely made. Handlebar mount, some straps for fixing your camera to a cycle helmet, USB charging lead, mount that slides into the stick-on brackets, skeleton case, which has got tripod holes in the top and bottom, standoff for the brackets, a shorter standoff, a backpack clip that goes into the skeleton case, so you can clip this onto a harness or helmet or chin guard of a helmet, a longer standoff, another standoff, and you do need a few, and a couple of stick-on mounts and spare pads for the stick-on mounts and a wire strop for securing the camera lens cleaning cloth, cable ties and the manual right, also a little card here warranty card even, a warranty now well it's not often I see a warranty card packed in with an action camera so let's get the camera out the case flip the lid doesn't come with a card obviously but hopefully the battery is inside I find these are fiddle to open because you've got to slide that little catch over at the same time as get your nail under there but yes there is a battery inside so I'll put it on charge and then we take a closer look right well it's easy to see that this is charging symbol that's going across showing it's charging when the red light goes out there that also means it's fully charged right the Elephone Explorer Elite 4k action camera let's take a closer look on the front here you've got a 170 degree wide angle lens the mode button which is also the power button press for three seconds to turn on press for three seconds to turn off speaker in the front in the base here you've got the battery compartment on this end, micro USB, micro HDMI and micro card slot. I use a good brand, Class 10, which you need for 4K cameras. 32 gig. Slides in logo side to the front. On the back, you've got a 2 inch screen. On this end, the scrolling up and down buttons and the top one is marked with a Wi-Fi symbol because that's how you turn the Wi-Fi on and on the top you've got the shutter release which is also used to scroll through and change settings and a little LED there I should mention on the back here you've got two little LEDs one's a charging light one's a recording light must say I've been out and taken a few test videos not all that easy to see this little flashing one that tells you it's recording that's one minor criticism this camera's got the Sony Exmor sensor, very good sensor, and an Overtech chip. And I must say the first results that I saw were very good. Shoots 4K at 24 frames a second, although I can't actually edit that, so I couldn't really do a test. Most of my video was shot at 1080, 60. Right, to turn it on, it's a three second press. Get a little beep. And one thing I noticed immediately was how quickly it boots up. So I think it's got quite a fast processor. Short press of the shutter button. And as you can see, you've got a light flashing there. You've got blue LED flashing to tell you that you're recording. Another press. And it stops. Once screen saver's kicked in, you've got to press it once to wake it up. Second press will stop it. But that's the same with most cameras. The display's telling me I've got 2 hours 32 minutes on that 32 gig card. I'm in... 4k at 24 frames a second mode um, and as far as I can see that's a genuine 24 frames a second I'm in video mode exposure values at zero I've got sound on I've got a card in and that's the battery life at the moment I haven't bothered to change the date yet oh in fact it's changed itself plugging into my PC and it's also updated the time so you don't need to do that that's worth knowing mentioned you've got scrolling buttons on this end so if I want to go oh that screensaver is obviously on a 30 second shutdown open it again if I want to go into camera mode short press of the power button I'm in camera mode the icons change to camera automatic film speed that's the ISO I've got 
the resolution of PIX set at 16 meg and there's capacity for 7408 images. Press the shutter release, I've taken a still, there's a little click there. Click. Press the power button again. I'm in playback mode. Press again and I'm in the settings menu or setup menu. So having gone into that, if I want to change the resolution, I press the shutter release. And you can see I've got these settings I can scroll through. 4K at 24, 2K at 30, 1080 at 16, my preferred choice, I must admit. 1080 at 30, 720 at 120, which is handy if you want to do slow-mo stuff. Right down to WGVA, QVGA, P30, whatever that is, and so on. So if I want to change that to 1080 at 60 from the 4K it was on, scroll it down to 1080, press the shutter release, and now if I press the power button, as you can see it's changed to FHD P60. But getting back to scrolling through the menu, scroll through the power button again, camera, playback, settings. You have loop recording for use as a car cam, time lapse record, which is a genuine time lapse, quite a good range of settings in time lapse from one minute to one second and it does produce a movie on screen mode that's display on or off HDR which I've got off high definition recording probably just makes a bigger file gives you a bit more data record audio on off slow motion is 720 at something or other 720 at 120 date stamp on or off motion detection it's got a built-in gyro, which is unusual for a budget camera. Although, first results I saw, there's a bit of a weird swishing about effect when the gyro's on. But I expect they will fix that in a firmware update. I see they've already optimised the gyro in the Explorer Elite Pro version. So, and this is a very new camera, the first version of the firmware. So no doubt they'll fix that, but I found it very acceptable results with the gyro off anyway just wake it up again so if I want the gyro off just flip up and down with the scrolling buttons change it to that image size that's the size of the still sequence it will take sequence photographs for burst photographs 3 5 10 capture mode this again will take a series of pictures at 2 seconds 5 seconds whatever Quality you can change from fine to normal economy, which again file size gives you a bit more data. Sharpness, exposure, white balance, colour, film speed, auto, not, delete, protect, date time, change, auto power off, change the time, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, beep sound on off, language, frequency, TV mode, TV out, obviously for the HDMI screensaver, was on 30 seconds as I thought. Car mode probably turns it upside down for the in-car or, or perhaps it lets it record with the USB plugged in. Field of view, you can make more narrow. I suspect it just uses a smaller part of the sensor, you, so you're probably better off staying in 170 wide field. Fisheye adjust, I did have on for some pictures. Again, it just takes in the field of view a bit. Aqua mode slightly increases the exposure value so that it's a bit brighter for underwater as far as I can see. Wi-Fi, one thing with this, if you want to use the Wi-Fi app, which I have got installed and I'll show you in a second, you actually have to turn the Wi-Fi on in the camera as opposed to just pressing a button. Oh, I've turned it on, right. I'll turn it off because I'm not ready to do that yet. How do I turn it off? Looks to me like I've got to turn the camera off. Turn it back on, three seconds. See how quickly it boots up there? Oh, and I, as you can see, I've got a little symbol there. I've actually put it into a timer mode, so I'll take that out. As again, scroll through the power button. Time lapse record, I'll turn that off, yes. At least you're seeing this in real time, how I actually get through these things. Um, and keep on going through here. 
beep sound, frequency, scar mode. As I say, you've got to turn the Wi-Fi on in there. Wi-Fi password is 12345678. And the app is already installed on my phone. I'll show you that in a second. Plate number, no doubt it records your car reg when it's in car mode. Format, default setting and firmware version. So if I want to come out of that now, just press the power button again. I'm back in video mode. Right, I'll take a breath and then I'll show you the Wi-Fi app. Might be time for a cup of tea, I think. See you in a minute. Right, I'm back after my cup of coffee, in fact, to show you the Wi-Fi app. First thing you've got to do is scan the QR code, which takes you to a link to download. Mine's Android, so it went to Play Store, just downloaded and installed the app. Next thing you've got to do is turn the Wi-Fi on on the camera scroll through using the power button to settings I'll scroll up there I can get to Wi-Fi quicker that way scrolling upwards Wi-Fi oh it is turn turn it on then you've got to press press the up button and when that little lights flashing it means it's looking for some Wi-Fi so let's see get to my pretty rubbish Motorola phone. I'll zoom out a bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Turn the Wi-Fi on, go into settings, Wi-Fi on. As I said, I've already installed this so the password's in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Explorer Elite, connect. And then in a minute you'll get a pop-up saying, do you really want to connect? This has got no internet. And that's what my phone does anyway. Touch for options. Yes, I do want to connect. Connected, no internet. Now if I go into the app, which is here somewhere, Explore Elite. There we are. Dare to be. And I'm already in there. Look at that. Wonder of Wonders. An app that actually works. So as you can see, the image on my phone, and of course this would work with a tablet as well, is what the camera's seeing. So what can I do with this? I can stop start recording. Squidgy sound. I've got a little LED flashing on there now as well, which is showing me that I'm recording. Can't see, and the little blue light's flashing, and of course screensaver's kicked in, so you, the screen has gone dark. I can turn it off again. I can change to camera mode, take a still, made a little squidgy sound, you hear that? Change back to video mode, I can, it doesn't look like I can change many settings, photo size, cyclic review, Wi-Fi, video res, oh you can change a few things here, right I'll change it back to 1080 60, easy. And the other thing, I'm not sure, quite sure what that symbol up there does. That's obviously refresh. And the other thing you can do is download your videos and view them on your phone or tablet, which if you're out and about somewhere doing an action sport means you can just sit in your car by the side of the river once you've got out of your kayak and you can look at your videos on a bigger screen. And of course, the easy way to come out of the app is you just turn your Wi-Fi off and turn the phone off. So all in all, this is an app that actually works and it does appear to be their own app. It's not one of the generic ones which I also have on my phone like Final Cam, Esi Cam and so on. As you can see I've got a few on here. SEMA, blah blah blah. Anyway, yeah, not bad at all.
short and cheerful flight because there's not a lot of wind and the direction's not right but at least I got up whoa look at that and people ask what that beeping noise is it's a thing struck to my leg which is called a vario which tells me when I'm going up and when I'm going down beeps when you're going up it makes a horrible noise when you're going down stalled it in so short and sweet that was a short paragliding film made with the Explorer Elite and it'd be longer if there was a bit more wind the right direction well hello again I'm going to keep this short and sweet, just like that paragliding flight. The Elephone Explorer Elite, a good little budget action camera. Um, not a clone, this is made by Elephone, who make other stuff, mostly phones from what I can see. You should get some support because it's a proper company. The colours were good, the lens is sharp, it's a gyro stabilised camera for around the 50 quid mark, which is pretty unusual. Good range of accessories too. It's got a good Sony Exmor sensor and a pretty fast processor. Very usable, nice menu. What more is there to say? If you're looking for a good budget action camera, I reckon this one will fill the bill. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now.